Hello crew, how are you? Helen here from in front of my fire. <laughs> where is it here? It's really cold where I am, not having a good day. So I thought, bugger it, I'm just gonna sit in front of the fire and chat to you from here. Uh, Cause sometimes you just have those days. So if you guys that are joining me live can just let me know that you can hear me okay. The internet connection is okay from where I'm sitting cause it's a lot further away from the modem and just that, you know, everything's, everything's running uh, good. So today I, I want to talk to you about stress um, and I know what that feels like the last couple of days and I'll explain that in a moment but I just want to have a chat to you guys about it because this is something a lot of people go through. Um, I'm sure you've been through stressful times in your past, you may even be going through it now and I'm sure you will go through it again. So it's really important to just, you know, think about things when we go through stress to not let things get out of control and to bring yourself back to a manageable state. Does that make sense, guys? Um, so it's, it's very worthy of a discussion. And if we haven't met before, my name is Helen Martin. Your online crew captain, no hat today, that's in the different room. <laughs> um, but I'm here to help home-based business owners, entrepreneurs, direct sellers, network marketers, MLMers, and if you want to build your business online and use social media to leverage, um, you know, to do that, then you're in the right place here. But my first video of the week is always something to do with um, personal development, personal growth. And today I want to talk about um, stress. It would be naive of people to not work out how to handle stress because we all go through it. Would you agree? Um, so I'll get onto that um, in, a in a moment and I'll share with you <laughs> sort of what's been happening in my world. And uh, we'll go from there. So hello, Crystal. How are you today? We've got Beth on as well. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Maddie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm sorry you're not having a good day. Well, it's just life. You still got to put a smile on your face. It's just some things, uh, you know, sometimes things happen and they just don't go according to plan. Uh, so that's my last, well, yesterday as well. But I'll share that with you in a moment. Can see and hear you very well. Thank you. I'm over here with um, Harley. Can you see uh, which way we're going here? You see Harley on his beanbag there? <laughs> That's where Harley lives, on his beanbag in front of the fire. Why not, I say. Um, oh, it's all good, guys. Don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> um, I, I've always got a smile on my face. It's just how you handle situations, guys. And I'll share with you sort of what that, what that is. Um, a lot of you will know, those of you newer to me might not know, but I do a lot of things. I've got a lot of things on my plate. I do a lot of different businesses and do a lot in here um, online, come live here four to five times a week. I've got my coaching community, my branding course, video challenges, mentor for an American company, like a lot of students that I mentor there. You know, I teach at the local gym and all that kind of stuff. And one of the other things that I do is um, I still do consulting accounting work. So it's just something that I'm in a contract to that I've done forever and a day. Uh, how many years have I done that? Um, 14, 20, almost 20 years, of, uh, something like that. Like a long time. <laughs> anyway, um, when you do accounting, there's deadlines and there's reports that need to be done for the board and stuff like that. And that requires obviously special software. Now, yesterday when I was meant to get all these reports done, I couldn't get into the software. And so I spent, I think, six hours yesterday on the phone to call centres and I don't have that kind of time. And it's continued on um, this morning and it's still not still not resolved and I've still not finished it. So I'm spending hours and hours of time that I don't have just trying to do something that I normally do simply. So it's frustrating and it's stressful. Um, so I've had to check in with myself. Like yesterday I was Sorry, but I was getting really pissed off because I hate wasting time and I hate wasting money. They're two things that I really don't like doing. Uh, my time is precious. I do a lot of things. I've got a lot of people that want my attention. Um, so, you know, I spread, I spread myself sort of pretty thin. So um, it's important for me to be efficient and normally I am. But there are things that happen in our lives, and you guys would know this, that are out of your control. So there's things that obviously slip us up 
and you can't do a damn thing about it. And this is really important with stress. But people handle stress differently. So there are times, like, do, have you ever found yourself, like, in traffic and you get really stressed because you're running late? and it really gets to you or like me they're having a software problem no, it's just like just get me into the software so i can do what i need to do and, and get, carry on with everything else i need to do like it's there's things that come up all the time some people are known as stress heads like is that you do you stress about lots of things do you worry about lots of things is that you do you overthink things a lot of people do they overthink a lot of things and they stress about things. So I want to give you guys today seven things to think about when you're really stressed because we often create stress that is not there. And what I mean by that is we overthink like a lot and we stress about things that, one, we may not be able to change, so there's absolutely no use stressing about it. And um, if you're one of those type of people that just worries a lot, worries about people, worries about what people are thinking, worries about, um, you know, conversations you're having or, you know, just worried about money or worried about whatever it is that you're worried about, <laughs> um, it can cause a lot of stress. So we really have to put stress into perspective. There are people like you can go into a supermarket and there might be a lineup or someone's wearing a mask or somebody's not wearing a mask or you know how that goes guys there are people that have really strong opinions about COVID and what you should do and shouldn't do and you know if somebody chooses not to wear a mask um, you know and they go into an environment where everyone is wearing masks then people get really uptight and stressed and all those kind of things uh, you know I'll never forget uh, one trip I had in a supermarket it was actually at Christmas time last year and it was busy it was just busy. You know, I don't know what happens at Christmas time and Easter and all those kind of things, but everybody flocks to the supermarket thinking they're never going to get food again. You know what it's like? And uh, people just get, you know, when they have to wait, they get stressed. And this guy in front of me was just going, oh, oh, oh this is taking so long. You know those people? They're just like you're in a lineup in the supermarket. It's like I just felt like saying to him, chill out, man. We're all in the same situation. It's not going to speed anything up for you to be acting like this and being rude to the staff. And then he started yelling at the staff. And it's just, you know, people move through life in different ways. And, you know, hopefully you're quite good at managing stress. But if you're not, I just want to give you seven things to think about when you find yourself really stressed to put stress into perspective. Because I guarantee you there's things that you stress about that you don't need to give that much time and attention and energy to. So the problem with stress is the energy you give to it. The time that you think you time that you spend stressing about things um, could be better off spent, you know, refocusing your energy into something more positive. Okay, so I'm going to run through a list of seven things. So I'm sitting on the floor, guys. So I'm just sort of moving around trying to get myself comfortable, but it's way too cold in the other room. So I'm just sitting in the front of the fire. And I know that's really weird for you guys over in the US and Canada that you're, you're the sun's shining and everything's good for you. Uh, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's cold in Australia. We're, we're in the middle of winter. Um, so that's, that's why I'm sitting here. Okay, so let's have a look at some of your, I'm kind of stressing too, I've got deadlines to meet with my book, I've got lots of packing to do and things to prepare for my trip to San Diego. So yeah, you've got a lot going on. So sometimes your organisational skills may be for you at the moment, Crystal, writing lists and like how do I, how do I manage all of this and what is my priority to get through first so you can organise yourself and minimise the, the stress, okay? But these seven things I'm going to go through can help us reassess our stress as well. So just hang in there for a second. Hey, Janine, how are you? Hi, Olive, good to see you on. Oh my, I'm dealing uh, with my website as you speak. <laughs> yeah, technology. It is the most amazing thing, technology, but when it doesn't go your way and you can't fix it without the help of a call centre or something like that and they can't seem to understand what you're trying to tell them. Um, yeah. I actually got, I'll, I'll admit this, um, I actually yelled at somebody on the phone the other day. I was really upset. I'd organised, um, and yeah, um, some of you will know who this is, so I'll share this story. 
Um, I organise some flowers on behalf of myself and people in my VIP mentorship program for a very dear bre- a friend, Bob Brown, who lost his wife, Judy. Some of you would know you would you would know them. And they rang me and said on the day they were meant to be delivered, they rang me and they said, um, I'm sorry, something went wrong with our courier. They didn't get delivered today, but we promised that they'll get delivered tomorrow. So I was like, there was nothing I could do about it. And I said, oh, well, that's not ideal, but I do understand. No problem. I was just thinking a day later, not a problem. So that day comes by and um, I thought later in the day, you know how it's when you order something and they deliver it, that they, you normally get an email confirmation that like flowers have been delivered. Like there's something to let you know that, you know, even when you order things online, that it's, it's arrived and those kind of things. Um, and I thought later that night, the second night, oh, I haven't had any confirmation about those flowers. So I rang them back up and I said, I just wanted to make sure, had the order number, just wanted to make sure these flowers have been delivered. And the woman um, said to me on the, on, the, on the chat, live chat, yes, yes, I have confirmation that they've been delivered, okay? So now we're on the third day. So the third day comes by and I'm having a chat with Bob in Messenger. And so we're chatting about something else. And I said, oh, did you get our flowers? Thinking they'd been delivered because they told me they'd be delivered. And he said, oh, no, I haven't received anything with your name on it. And I said, no, it was me and all the all the VIPs. And he said, well, I don't think so, but let me check it out, you know, I, I'm presuming with his family. And so I thought, what's going on here? So I rang them back. I said, this is the third day. So I rang them back. And I said, oh, this is order number. You told me they were delivered yesterday. I've just spoken to the person I was sending them to. Um, they said they haven't been um, delivered. What's going on? And she said, oh, no, I'm sorry, they haven't been delivered. So at this point I'm livid because, one, this was important to me and on behalf of my VIPs as well, it was very important to me that these flowers got delivered and in a timely fashion. And they lied to me the day before and said they were delivered when they weren't. So... How do you think I reacted? <laughs> I actually, rather than get, getting angry, I actually got really upset because I was I was disappointed that one, they said they'd been delivered when they hadn't and I was just more disappointed that the flowers hadn't even got there yet. And she said, I'm so sorry. And I said, this is not good enough. You told me this and then you told me that and somebody told me this and blah, blah. So I'm going through the scenarios and she's like, yes, I understand. And I ended up saying to her, I'm not directing this at you. I know you're the only that you're the person on the other end of the phone. So I'm sorry that I'm upset, but I'm very, very disappointed. And um, you know, it's just not good enough. And she said, "Yes, I know. I understand. They'll be delivered tomorrow." I said, "How do I know? You've already told me that three times. How do I know that they're going to get delivered?" She said, "I promise you, they'll do up a fresh lot and all the rest of it." And they did get delivered the next day and um, Bob let me know when they've arrived and, you know, it's all worked out in the end but about three days later than what they were meant to. So I had to check in with myself when I was getting upset and angry with this person because we often direct our frustration on people that are right there in front of us, including your family, guys. When you're frustrated with things, who do we take it out on the most? It's the people that are in front of us and the closest to us. So sometimes when you're, and this is the one of the seven things, which I'll get to um, in a second, so bear with me. Um, this is one of the seven things. We have to we have to check, it, uh, check in with our stress. Who are you projecting it on, which has got absolutely nothing to do with them? And often it can be your family. So you might be really frustrated. You might be really upset. And sometimes if you're anything like me and my husband, we shut down when we're stressed. Can you relate to that? So you, um, you just, you know, shut down. When things go wrong, you just disappear a little bit. You retreat a little bit, um, you know, from communities, people you work with, colleagues, um, you know, might be teammates and stuff like that. When people are really stressed and they're worried about things, they often retreat and kind of disappear a little bit, um, you know, and people don't realise that, you know, and that's not intentional, but sometimes we hurt the people that are closest to us that are trying to be helpful or just trying to be, you know, supportive of you, and that includes your children too. How many times, those of you that have got kids or even grandkids, how many times do you have a, you know, yell at them for something when you're actually frustrated about, you know, completely something different? But because you're frustrated or you're a little bit stressed, 
that's who ends up wearing the brunt of it. So, you know, it can, it can be you just got to watch it. You just got to watch your stress levels and who you take it out on. So let me get to the, to the seven points. What I want you to consider here is putting your stress into perspective. Doesn't mean stress will never happen again. You're always going to get stressed. Things are always going to push your buttons uh, like me yesterday and today. I still haven't finished what I need to do. So it's pushing well into today for me. And there's other things that I need to be doing. Um, but it is what is. So you just have to manage it the best way you are. But let me run through these seven things for you, okay? One thing to consider when you're really stressed is, is it really that bad? Really important thing to consider. So when you get all up in arms and, um, you know, one thing you don't want to do when you're stressed or upset or angry, which are all forms of stress, is to send a message to somebody or, uh, you know, yell and scream at somebody. You need to stop and retreat for a second to think about what's going on and have a think about, is it really that bad? Like when you're st stuck in traffic and you're running late for something and it's, um, you know, um, it seems bad in the moment, is it really that bad what you're stressing about? Or is it just that you're super busy? So one thing to put into perspective with your stress, is it really as bad as you think it is? Put that into perspective because I bet you it probably isn't. Have you ever stressed about something really badly and then looked back and in retrospect you've gone, actually that wasn't as bad as what I, how I acted at the time or I probably shouldn't have shot that message off to somebody in the moment because I was a bit angry and pissed off and stressed? Have you ever done that before? And it's actually really not as bad when you sort of sit back and relax about it a little bit as bad as you think. So that's number one. Is it really as bad, like the stress that you're carrying or the situation you're going through? Um, you know, is it, is, it really that, is it really that bad? Number two, when you're in that state of stress, who are you hurting around you? Who are you letting down? So you can be in your own little bubble of, you know, a massive stress. And I'm not saying it's not a legitimate stress. But this is where you need to put your stress into perspective. Is this a long-term thing or a short-term thing? Like how are you managing that stress and who are you affecting around you? So that situation where you might be in a really bad mood, you might be really frustrated. Um, you know, I that situation I was going through yesterday, I just chose to talk to Paul about it. Like he could sense when he came home last night that I was stressed. He said, what's up? And instead of going, ah, rah, 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 it was just like, I'm just so frustrated. I'm just, you know, blah, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the kids were, um, you know, being really rowed and doing something. And I just went, guys, I'm just trying to sort something out at the moment. I would really appreciate if you, you know, X, Y, Z, rather than going, can you stop doing that, blah, 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 blah. You know, that you, you can react in whatever way you want to react. But when we're, you know, holding on to stress and, you know, you're feeling the stress, it's really important to consider who are you impacting around you. So that's number two to think about. Number three, don't judge immediately. So sometimes when we go through stress, we take it personally or, um, you know, our thought processes are not that rational about what the stress is actually about or you jump to a conclusion because somebody said something or did something that you didn't like or it wasn't convenient for you or something like that. And so we are very quick to judge people on things that might stress you out. So I would just encourage you, don't judge people. Like you need a particular scenario to, to sort of put that into perspective. But sometimes we get stressed about something and we judge people for it. Why did you do that? Or you caused me to do that because you did that. Like you never know what's going on in somebody's world. So I'm just sort of encouraging you not to judge people around you too quickly. You never know their circumstances. You never know what's going on. Somebody might do something that annoys you, but there could be a very good reason for that in their world that you have no idea of. So just be really careful of judgment when it comes to stress. Number four Really and highly encourage you with stress when you know you're being triggered is to actually just stop and think. Don't react. Don't send the message. Don't open your mouth. Don't yell. Just sit for a second and just reassess like I'm getting really elevated here. Like you can feel it. Stress you can feel in your body, can't you? You know what it's like when you're feeling really stressed. 
that's a very good time for you to step back for a second and go, okay, I just need to stop for a minute and I just, I'm not, I'm not going to react. I need to think about what I'm going to say or I'm going to sit on this for an hour and see if I would still send that same message and I guarantee you half the time you won't because you would have calmed down. So check in with your stress regarding how you're reacting to it and, you know, the combination of things like, um, you know, is it really that bad? Is it, is it really that bad? Probably not, okay? And another one to take into consideration, which is number five, is is it going to matter in a week or even a month what you're really stressing about now? It could be, no, it's been and gone, dealt with. Okay, so let's not stress about it now because it's not something huge in my life that I have to rearrange my life for. Like, is the thing that you're stressing about going to be, uh, really, is it going to be an issue in a week or a month? And if it's not, then that might be a good indication that you need to calm down or let go or just, you know, deal with it in a better way. Am I making sense, guys? Uh, number six, really important to remind yourself, and this is what I had to do last night, um, you can't stress about things you can't change. So if you can't do anything about it and it's relying on a third party to help you or sort you out, like a call centre, like I've been on a million times the last day and a half, like if it's nothing you can resolve there and then, it's not up to you, then you have to chill out about that. Um, you know, if it's a health issue and something and you're waiting for test results and all those kind of things, you have to keep telling yourself um, I'm not going to stress out until I know what I'm dealing with. At the moment, you know, you don't don't know what you're dealing with, like, you know, health conditions and stuff like that. Like you can't stress about things that you don't really know or, um, you know, that you can't change. It is what it is. So it's really important as a human being, if you can't change something, like if you're stuck in traffic and you can't change the environment, you can't change the traffic light, you can't change the cars around you, then don't stress out about it because there's nothing you can do about it. That's just one example to make it relatable to what I'm saying, that you really need to check in with yourself sometimes. If you can't change it, then you can't get stressed about it. And maybe it's an indication for you to go, maybe you can change it. Maybe you could go a different direction or turn right or left and go a different way out of the traffic or maybe you could just even think differently. Like, no, this is on me. I'm creating this. I'm reacting this way. One of the best things you can do, and I say this over and over again in this community, it is not the same circumstances that you're dealing with. It's not the cards you've been dealt. It's how you deal with them. So you can either react and get impatient, get stressed and frustrated, and you'll always do that. But just don't hang on to it. You reassess these kind of things really quickly. You go there. You're naturally always going to go there. You're never going to do enough personal development that you're going to be the most chilled out, cool, calm and collected person on this planet. You're always going to get triggered. But let the triggers last for like five minutes or 30 minutes, not a day or two or hanging on to stress or frustration for like three days. Like I've just had to roll with it this morning to try to fix the problem that I was telling you guys about earlier, but now I'm not doing it with the stress and the frustration. It's like, okay, I've just got to solve this as quickly as I can and get what I need to get done once I can get into the file. And, you know, just it is what is, okay? So don't stress about things you can't change. And the biggest tip that I'll give you, which is number seven, is it, it, it rolls with, you know, a lot of the others, is you just need to stop and evaluate. You just need to, like, evaluation will save you in your life. Stop and evaluate. Okay, what can I do about this? Nothing at the moment, okay? I have to shelve that for a minute until this happens and that person can help me, but I can't do anything more about this in this point in time, so I'm going to shift my energy to something more positive. That's in your court. That's up to you to work out where, what you're going to give your energy to. And honestly, it's a waste of time to give a whole lot of energy from you to stuff that's not going well and stressing you out. So don't waste your energy on those kind of things. Evaluate really quickly all the other six things that I've shared with you, work out what you can do and what you can't do, and then move on really, really quickly. Okay? Does that make sense to you guys?
just want to check in with some of your comments. Sorry, I'm not moving around because I'm sitting on the floor. Um, blah, 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 blah. Beth, I'm learning to recognize the triggers, the lump in my throat, the pit in my stomach. The breathing has helped me so much. Yeah, so just to share with that with you guys, uh, breathing. Uh, there's a technique that um, I've shared with the VIP students. I'll share it with you now for those of you that um, are interested. This is so quick and so simple. You can shift your energy really quickly by a simple breathing technique. And that is as simple as, I think I've shared it here before anyway, you breathe in for five, you hold for five, you breathe out for five. So literally you just go. <sighs> Use your fingers if you have to. But do it after you get off this live. Do it now while you're listening to me and feel the shift in your energy and your brain. So just shifting your energy and shifting your focus is so, so important. Um, it's how you feel with them and if you feel with them. Some people choose to brush it under the rug and hope it goes away. That doesn't help at all. No, you have to deal with your stuff. You have to deal with your frustrations, uh, you know, all those kind of stuff. Why is my mouth stuck? Um, yeah. I cry too. Too sensitive, I guess. Crying is fine, Olive. Crying is um, just one form of, you know, outlet. When I get really disappointed and upset, um, I cry. So I cried last night um, or yesterday. We were getting closer to a resolution and I had to take both my kids to the orthodontist. Both my kids are getting braces. They've got to start with plates. It's a probably a two, two year plus process. It's going to cost about $20,000 by the time we're finished. Like it's a huge process and I had appointments for them yesterday afternoon right in the middle of trying to sort all this out. And she still wanted to go and I said, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to call you back again because I need to pick up my children. Um, and I was so frustrated because I didn't want to get off the phone to solve my issue that my kids come first. I needed to get them to that appointment. So I cried in the car, Olive. Like I got in the car and I just, it was just pure frustration. I don't have the time for this. But, you know, crying is okay. You've got to let it out. It's just not hanging on to it. Um, you know, so crying's a good thing. We don't want to worry about crying. Anyway, I've spoken long enough. I'm going to go back to your comments and have a look what you guys have written. But I just hope this conversation helps you just think about um, what's the word for it? Putting stress into perspective. So when you are really stressed, is it going to last forever? No, it could just be a moment in time. So tell yourself, okay, I just have to get through this. It will be better. So when there's light at the end of the tunnel, you can you can put things into perspective. Um, you know, when you're in the moment, in the heat of things, is this going to matter in a week? No, it'll all be resolved by then or I would have found a solution. Okay, so if it's not going to be life-altering, earth shattering stuff that's going to affect the rest of my life then put that into perspective um you know if you allow yourself to get frustrated and angry and you feel that you physically feel that take a step back stop speaking don't send any messages in messenger <laughs> don't write an email sit on whatever you're sitting on for about 12 to 48 hours and i guarantee the stress is never as bad as what it is in the moment but that's up to you guys to control but if you can manage your stress, and there's lots of obviously other techniques regarding relaxation and breathing and music and meditation, like all those other things and walking and it can help reduce your stress. But these seven things that I'm highlighting to you today, I help you to reevaluate, just evaluate the stress that you're in in the moment and just calming that situation down. Okay. So as for me, I've got to get back to my figures. I've got to get into this software and finish off those financial reports and then move on, okay? Those of you in the video challenge, I was going to do a video before this live, but that obviously hasn't happened. But there will be another live in the video challenge group, so that'll be video nine um, in a few hours uh, when I sort out my immediate problem. So keep an eye out for video nine for content for days five uh, to 10. Okay. So I just wanted to let the video challenges know there's a video coming video nine shortly. 
okay? So it will be my today. All right, guys, so thank you for being here with me live. Thank you for listening. I hope this just gives you some kind of food for thought to help you manage your stress, and I'll be back tomorrow, normal time, uh, with more training. Okay, guys, take care. Bye.